response to a prolonged crisis. We understand now na halos umaabot na po ng dalawang taon ang crisis na ito. Now, humahaba na. Ano naman ang mag, dapat na maging tugon natin? Let me share to you the, the message for today, do not linger in weakness. Kasi habang tumatagal po, nasusubukan kung hanggang saan ang kakayanan natin, hanggang saan ang kalakasan natin. Remember this, that whatever strength you were able to gain in the past, uh, in the previous probably two years, they remain with you. But you have used up, many of us have used up that strength because of this ongoing crisis. So, dumarating na po ang iba sa kahinaan. But then, alam natin, aminin natin, na oo, meron po tayong mga kahinaan. Pero huwag tayong tatagal sa pangihina. Because to some, this crisis have been a, an opportunity. They look at it as an opportunity for greater uh, expansion of business for greater influence uh, with other people and greater uh, opportunity to be with the family, especially when you work at home. But to some, they are not able to adjust to this crisis. So dumarating po sila sa punto ng kanilang pangkahinaan o sila'y nangihina o nanlulupaypay. Just imagine, the Word of God says that we should not neglect the gathering of ourselves together in worship, in fellowship. But you, when we miss the gathering of ourselves, we miss the encouragement that we receive from, from each other. We miss the uh, opportunity to minister to one another because worship and ministry will result to our own strength. Dito po tayo na refreshed at na encouraged. Sabi nga po sa scripture, those who refresh others will himself also be refreshed. So, when you are in your time of weakness, do not linger. The word linger means you stay for a longer period. Dapat po dadaanan lang natin. Even the valley of the shadow of death is just a valley. Don't stay in that valley of the shadow of death. Proceed further and you will find out that there is a, a greater light. There is a place of comfort ahead of you. There is a place of strength ahead of you. Do not linger in weakness. Joel 3.10 now, read together. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Look at the verse, uh, first part of the verse. Beat your plowshares into swords and pruning hooks into spears. Swords and spears talks about weapons. It talks about a battle or a warfare. Plowshares and hooks, these are used in, not in conflict times, not in war times, but you use it in peacetime. So there's a shift here that says that God is calling His people to prepare for a major battle. And right now, sa ating pong uh, uh, kasalukuyang panahon, what is this major battle? This is the battle, the crisis that concerns your health. The crisis that concerns your finances. The crisis that concerns the welfare and well-being of your family. And God is calling all of us, those who believe in Him especially, that we should be ready for this major battle. But we cannot face it in weakness. We can only face it in the strength of the Lord. That's why He said, let the weak say, I am strong. We do not deny na tayo po ay may kahinaan din. But do not stop from there. Realizing that you have your weakness, do not stop there. That's not your place where God wants you to be. But let the weak say, I am strong. Amen? Let me say this. The, the Israelites stayed in Egypt, but that was never the will of God for them to stay for the rest of their lives. The will of God is for them to go to the promised land. And in proceeding to the promised land, they have to go through the wilderness. Again, the wilderness is not the place for them. Why? Because both Egypt, a place of bondage, both uh, and also the wilderness is a place of weakness, a place of barrenness. 
That's not the place that God has set for his people. The place is the promised land. That's the place where they can be, become a strong nation. That's a place of strength. When you are in your weakness, you may say you are in your Egypt or you are in your wilderness. That's not your place. Just pass through. We are just passing through our quote-unquote Egypt. We are just passing through our quote-unquote wilderness because we are proceeding to our place of strength, which is our promised land. Amen? Exodus 15, 2. Read together. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. This is my God. I will praise him. You know what? The indication that you are becoming weak, that you are losing strength, is when you are no longer singing. It will affect your song. What songs are you singing? Is it a song of depression? Is it a song of uh, complaint? Is it a song of grumbling? What song? Alam niyo po, pag ang tao malakas, malusog, masaya, hindi po niya mapigil na siya'y kumanta. Ano po? Hindi lang tuwing naliligo, kundi kumakanta siya dahil masaya siya. Something good he feels on the inside and his emotions is burst, bursting out with song. Okay? Na, na LSS po sila. Pero ano po ang, uh, ang mga awiti natin? Awiti ng mga sawi? Awiti ng mga inabando na? O it, it is a song of strength. And what will make you uh, be assured that you have the strength and you can sing before the presence of God. You can sing in worship. Because it's because He has given you the victory. Even before the start of any crisis, kahit na po itong crisis natin sa kasalukuyan, bago po ito nagumpisa, God has already given you the victory. That's your starting point. Palagi po natin sinasabi the uh, what Jesus has accomplished on the cross, that was his end. This end is victory, but that's our beginning. Okay? We do not uh, start in defeat. No, we start where Jesus ended, where Jesus, what Jesus has finished. And he finished his redemption on the cross, and to us, that's our victory. So we start in his victory. Before any given crisis, he has given you the victory. Tell the one beside you now, God has already given you the victory over this crisis. Mahaba po yun, ano po? Ulit-ulitin natin. Binigyan ka ng Diyos ng tagumpay sa krisis na ito. Amen. That's what you're going to claim. So that you begin in strength. You don't start from weakness. Okay? You do not start from an empty battery. No. You start with the full Fully charged battery, spiritual battery. Don't give yourself a break to be weak, but break away from weakness through faith. Amen? Kung makamisan ang prinsipyo natin, you know, sometimes tao lang ako, bigyan ko naman ng sarili ko ng pagkakataong maging mahina. Ah, that's a very dangerous position to, to stand on. Why? Because the enemy is looking for someone who is weak to devour. Binubuksan natin ang ating puso, binubuksan natin ang ating buhay, even your family, your finances, your health. You're opening yourself to the attacks of the enemy. Kasi ang titingnan ng kaaway, hindi po yung mga malalakas. Mahirap pong buwagin yon. Ang hinahanap na lapain ng jablo, tulad ng isang leon, ay yung mga mahihina. So don't give yourself a break. No, at least, kumensan, dinajustify natin yun. Uh, pagbigyan ko naman sarili kong magwala naman. Pagbigyan ko naman ang sarili kong, you know, madapa naman. Wag po, wag. It, it may make you feel good about yourself, but it will eventually uh, bring bad things into your life. Okay? So break away from weakness. Exercise your faith in the Lord. Amen? Is it okay to be weak? Okay? That's a question now. Is it okay in this crisis? Is it okay to be weak? Is it okay to, uh, to accommodate uh, weakness and to uh, take a vacation from your spiritual walk with God? Diba? Kung may san, 
uh, gusto mo naman pahinga linggo ngayon, pwede bang uh, magpahinga naman ako, wag muna akong mag-worship. Uh, bukas na lang ako sa YouTube, kinaumagahan, walang signal, kinaumagahan na lang, kinaumagahan na lang, hanggang makalimot na. You know, weakness do not start in something big. Weakness and defeat starts in something little. But as you are not conscious about it, lalo po yung weakness natin, nagkakaroon po ng exponential growth. Namumultiply po yan, lumalaki po yan. To the point that you may not realize it, you are into depression. You are into a disease, emotional or spiritual. So is it okay to be weak? Let me say this. Man's fall into sin open up his life to all kinds of weakness. But Christ's redemption has restored to man both his physical and spiritual strength by faith, by the working of the Spirit. So in the process of this message, we will ask the question always in every point, is it okay to be weak? Tell the one beside you, ask him, is it okay with you to be weak? I will not answer that question. You'll be the one to answer that question. Okay. Uh, but personally, I don't like to be with a weak person. Malaking dalahin po yan. Yan ay nagbibigay lamang ng kabigatan. So, kayo po ang sasagot. Is it okay to be weak? First point natin, do not linger in weakness. That's your response to a prolonged crisis. Huwag tayong mananatili sa kahinaan. Number one, wake up to your reality. Uh, nakatulog ka, kapatid. Medyo dapat uh, uh, gising tayo. Gising, okay? What is your reality? Past. There is a, sense, uh, uh, a reality of the past. You are still in sin. That's your past. Bound by weakness. Doomed to defeat. And there is such a thing as present reality. You are forgiven. You are righteous. You are healed. Blessed. Present because, pero makita natin, forgiven, righteous, made righteous, healed, blessed. Parang past tense na rin ito. Pero kasi kung ano yung na-accomplish ni Jesus sa krus, sa kanyang kaligtasan para sa atin, yun po ang naging present natin. Right? Healed, blessed, rich, prosperous. You have peace. These are your present realities. And number three, you have your future reality. You live to prepare for the glorious coming of Jesus. So ano po ang realidad natin? Ano ang dapat nating tugon? Especially kapag umaharap tayo sa krisis o sa mga pagsubok o sa mga problema na ating nararanasan sa bawat araw na ating buhay. Now, if you live in the past, ang tawag ko po rito ay struggler. Tapos na po ang laban. Amen. Yet, if we live in the past, we will keep on struggling over our weaknesses, struggling over a situation. Para po yan yung Japanese struggler. Tapos na po yung gera ay naandun pa siya sa Mindoro at ang tawag sa kanya, struggler. He keeps on struggling as if the war has not yet ended. We are no longer Yes, we are engaged in a war, but our enemy has already been defeated. That's the past. Tapos na po yun. Huwag na nating balikan pa yung inumpisahan natin ng ating lumang buhay na ito pa parang wala pa rin nagawa ang Panginoon sa ating uh, mga buhay na tayo talunan pa rin. Hindi na po. In fact, let me say this, your healing was accomplished 2,000 years ago. God has made you rich. God became poor so that you will be made rich. God became sin so that you will be made holy and righteous. Now, pupunta tayo dun sa present reality. You don't struggle anymore with those things because God himself gave us the victory. And those who live in the present, they are overcomer. Okay? Lives Christ, salvation reality. Ano yung salvation reality? You are the healed of the Lord. You are rich in Christ. You have the peace of God. And you will walk in victory every day. Yun po yung overcomer reality natin. And there's a future reality. I call it the prepper. Naghahanda ng ganda. Hindi po pepper, prepper. Okay? 
he, he is preparing, preparing, keep on preparing for the future hope with disregard of whatever is in the present. So you miss, a person who is a prepper would miss whatever opportunities God is giving him at the present. Whatever influence, whatever uh, blessing na binigay ng Diyos sa kanya sa kasalukuyan, parang hindi niya ito makita, ang nakikita niya ay yun lamang kanyang paghahanda sa pagdating ng Panginoon. Brothers and sisters, are you a struggler, an overcomer, or a prepper? What is your reality? Kung ano po kasi yung realidad na nakikita natin sa ating buhay, yun din ang ipamumuhay natin. But let me say this, say to the one beside you, I am an overcomer. Okay. And you became an overcomer not because of you, but because of what Christ has done in your behalf. Amen? Philippians 4.13 now. Read together. I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through Him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. God has given you strength for all things. Strength for all things. Ano pong ibig sabihin? God has given you strength when you are weak physically, emotionally, spiritually. Part po yan ng all things. God has given you strength to face the crisis in terms of your financial need. God has given you the strength to be the kind of person He wants you to be in, in this time of, of crisis. God has given you everything. All things. Everybody say with me, all things. But then the key here is not just strength for all things, but in Christ who empowers me. Dapat mo personal ito. Ito yung ginawa at kapahayagan ng Diyos kay Apostle Paul na naging personal sa kanya. I have the strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything. Not because of my strength, not because of who I am and where I am right now, but through Him who infuses inner strength into me. Therefore, the conclusion, I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Let me ask you this. Is it okay to be weak? That can be, if you say it's okay, then it can be an insult to what God has done in you through Christ. To in the power that God sa kanyang kapangyarihan ibinibigay sa iyo sa araw-araw upang ikaw ay magtagumpay sa lahat ng bagay. Pag sinabi mong okay lang maging weak, you are disregarding the strength that comes through Christ. You are uh, giving less importance sa kalakasan at kapangyarihan ipinagkaloob na sa iyo ng Panginoon. Amen? 2 Corinthians 12.9a Read together. He said to me, My grace, favor, loving kindness, mercy, is enough for you, sufficient against any danger, enables you to bear the trouble manfully. Diba? Meron ba tayong nakikitang kahinaan? Sa gitna po ng ating mga kahinaan, ang tugon ng Diyos, biyaya. Hindi niya sinabi sa iyo, Anak, Okay lang, maging mahina. Hindi po. Ang sinabi ng Diyos, my grace is enough for you. Enough means sufficient, ample, adequate, ab abundant, sapat, kasya. Hindi kulang, ano po, sapat at kasya. It's enough for you. Sufficient against any danger, any crisis, any uh, health problems that you may have, any financial need and enables you not just sufficient against these things, but it enables you to bear the trouble manfully. O ibig sabihin, it helps you face the problem uh, head on with strength, with confidence, leading to your victory. Amen? My grace is enough for you. Sabihin mo sa katabi mo, God's grace is enough for you. It's not okay for you to be weak. Amen. Not okay. It's an insult against the grace of God. 
12.9b. Read together. For my strength and power are made perfect, fulfilled and completed, and show themselves most effective in your weakness. Kita natin yung uh, uh, comparison na sa bahagi natin, there is weakness, but the grace of God is sufficient. He will give you both the strength and power. At habang daw tayo may kainaan, ay lalo namang nagiging effective. Umabisa ang kanyang biyaya, ang kanyang kapangyarihan sa ating buhay. God's grace has taken weakness out of the human DNA. He placed in man his divine strength instead. So again, we ask a question. Is it okay to be weak? You give the answer. Amen. So number two now, number one, wake up to your reality. Gising. Hoy! Gising! Gising tayo sa katotohanan sa ginawa ng Panginoong Yesus sa krus para sa atin. Number two now is work out your faith. See, God made us a people of faith. Our God is a God of faith. Therefore, we also should operate in faith because in the scripture, faith will lead us to victory. Who is he that overcomes the world? Which means that overcomes any crisis, any sickness, any financial need in the world? It's our faith. He who believes in Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Mark 5, 25, 26. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. Ibig sabihin, it was a lingering disease. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors, had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. So makita po natin dito, sa halip na yung mga doktor magbigay sa kanya ng dagdag na kaalwanan o magdagdag na comfort and healing, ay lalo pa siyang nag-suffer. Ano po? What an, a, a tragic experience and ironical experience for her. So ibig sabihin, hopeless na siya. Those people who seem to give he, her the solution were not able to do it. So ano pong nangyari? Pwede po siyang magsabi, ah, wala na pag-asa, uh, 12 years na itong nangyayari sa akin, kaya siguro uh, hanggang mamatay na lang ako, ito na lang ikamamatay ko. At hindi pa yun, salip na siya'y gumaling, ay lumala pa mga kapatid. So what a great uh, uh, challenge sa kanya. Okay? Pero look at verse 27, 28. When she heard about Jesus, so, doctors, uh, mga doctors know ito, no. Uh, no healing, okay? But when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, or she said to herself, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Pakita po natin dito, that first thing he heard about Jesus. Romans 10, 17, so faith comes by, from hearing, that is, hearing the good news about Christ. So nakarinig siya ng mabuting balita ng Panginoon, narinig niya ang magagandang bagay na ginawa ng Diyos, ang mga kababalaghan, sa, pagpapagaling sa mga may sakit. Hindi lang ito naging isang katotohanan sa kanya sa narinig niya, kundi ito'y isang bagay na pinanghawakan niya. Kung ang ibang tao ay kanyang pinagaling, di kaya't kaya rin siyang pagalingin ni Jesus. Bagamat siya po ay pinagbabawala na ayon sa kautusan na lumapit sa maraming tao, pero hindi ito naging hadlang sapagkat ang naghari sa kanya ay ang kanyang pananampalataya. Sa ayon sa kanyang narinig, nagsalita siya sa, kany sari sa kanyang sarili that if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. That was the expression of his faith the expression of his believing on the basis of what she has heard about Jesus. Then verse 29 and 33. Immediately. Everybody say with me, immediately. immediately. Alam niyo po, sa pagkilos ng Diyos, sa anumang kainaan natin, it's not the will of God for you to stay there. That's the reason why the Israelites, ang plano ng Diyos, alisin sila sa Egypt. Alisin sila sa wilderness. 
At ang plano rin ng Diyos sa buhay ng bawat isa, whatever situation you may be in right now, if that's your place of weakness, God wants you out immediately from there. So immediately, her bleeding stopped. Ano po yung bleeding? That was the reason for her suffering. That was the reason for all his miseries. And that was not, not the place of God. I say to you, weakness is not the will of God for you. That's not the will of God for you to be. Amen? So immediately, her bleeding stopped. And she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. Oh, that's the greatest feeling she has ever felt in 12 years. Biro inyo, siguro malaking bagay na naranasan niya ito. At kung sa ating kasalukuyang panahon, pagka nagkaganon, ay, uh, dapat linggo-linggo na. Dapat yung lunis linggo na para makapag-worship na ako. Because of that great experience of the goodness and the favor and the grace of God, kung makamisan, marami tayong ginagawang pangako, ano po? Subalit, pagka hindi tayo nanatili sa panampalataya, u- manghihina ulit tayo. Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from suffering, from her suffering. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. Kasi dito po ang konteksto, hinanap ni Jesus, sabi niya, may kapangyarihang lumabas sa akin. Sino ang naka, sino kaya ang uh, lumapit sa akin? at uh, nahayag sa kanya at na, na-release sa kanya ang kapangyarihan ko. Sabi ng mga alagad, Lord naman, tingnan mo naman, ang dami naman tao, marami nang bumangga sa iyo. Sino ba naman yon? But Jesus knew when faith operates, when faith is expressed in a person, no matter how many people are there around him, he knows alam po niya that you have exercised your faith. What attracts the attention of Jesus and what releases the power that comes from Him is your faith. So, nung naging response niya, He fell at His feet. It's better to fall at the feet of Jesus in worship, in prayer, in praise. While you are in a crisis, take hold of the strength of God that you may not fall into temptation. Take hold of the grace of God that you may not fall into depression. But rather, before you fall into depression, emotional breakdown, burnout, sickness that leads to probably death, better fall at the feet of Jesus. That's how you express your faith. If you are sick, double dose po tayo ng salita ng Diyos. Patuloy tayo makinig ng salita ng Diyos. Patuloy tayong mag-worship. Rather than falling into a, an incurable disease, falling into a great depression, unahan na po natin. Let's fall at the feet of Jesus in worship, in humility, and in giving Him the praise, the honor, and the glory, regardless of your circumstance. And I tell you this, if you do that, I believe it will attract the power of Jesus to be released into your life so that you will sense, you will experience the immediately uh, aspect of the release of His power. And you will feel in your body, you will see in your body that you will be freed from whatever suffering you are experiencing. Amen? This is the major uh, response of Jesus. He said to her, Daughter, ano rapo? Your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Naranasan na niya ang pagkilos ng Diyos. Sa kanyang kainaan, di siya nakontento na mamatay na lamang sa kanyang kainaan. In the first place, 12 years. Secondly, nasubukan niya na lahat ng mga doktor, hindi gumaling, lalong lumala. And this time, he tried, she tried something different. She tried what others Uh, have not tried. Sino po kanya manampalatayan sa Panginoon? With boldness and confidence, 
in-approach niya si Jesus, hindi nga alam ni Jesus na siya yung nag-approach eh. But then, her coming was an expression of her faith. So that in po ng Panginoong Jesus ang kanyang ginawa, Daughter, your faith has sealed you. Go in peace. Peace means nothing missing, nothing broken. Now, what do you want in your life? Trouble? Conflict? Confusion? Or you want peace? then you have to work out your faith in the midst of crisis. Why? Because crisis sometimes bring you anxiety, worry. It's a matter of your attitude and response to these things. Rather than worrying and being fearful about the circumstance, lapit ka sa Panginoong Jesus. Wala namang magagawa yung worry natin. Eh. Sabi po sa scripture, hindi naman makadadagdag ito ng kahit isang segundong buhay at kalusugan sa atin kung tayo'y mag-aalala. Try Jesus. Okay? Try to approach Jesus. Fall at His feet in worship, in prayer, in humility, in submission. Then you will have the immediately healing, restoration, blessing, provision in your life. And it says, your faith has healed you. Your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. Amen? Faith requires both attitude, believing, and action, obedience, in response to the Word of God that is heard and received. Let me just encourage you, uh, children of God, in this time of crisis, do not wait for somebody to invite you. Do not wait for someone to encourage you, to follow you up, to uh, call you and text you. No, no, no. You know where we are. You know the fellowship. You know our YouTube channel. You know that we have a Facebook account. Okay? Come. By the way, ito pong woman with the issue of blood or has bleeding, sino pong nag-invite sa kanya? Kung Siguro pe, pwede niyang sabihin, hindi niyo ako pinalo up. Hindi niyo man lamang ako binisita. At siya'y namatay. Masisisi ba niya? No, no, no. Christ, I am sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. No man or woman, not even any church can be sufficient for you. Christ is the only one who is sufficient for you. And His strength is sufficient for you also. Okay? So exercise your faith. You yourself have to work out your faith. Okay? Work out your believing. Do not wait for others to encourage you. Do not wait for others to say, pray for you. Yes, sometimes uh, uh, God uses the prayers of other people. God uses the encouragement of other people. But more than these things, look up to God. Fix your eyes on Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Take hold of the grace of God in your own life. Exercise your faith that you are the heel of the Lord. That you who is weak, you can say by faith, I am strong. You strong in what? Strong financially, strong physically, strong spiritually, strong emotionally. So that if that's your reality, you become an overcomer. Amen? Encouragement is from the Lord. We do not have a high priest who is unable to understand, sympathize, and have a shared feeling with our weaknesses and infirmities. Let me say this. No matter what man can do to understand, sympathize, and share the feelings of your weaknesses, we will all together fall short of your expectation. Go to the presence of God. Approach the high priest because he is the only one who perfectly understands, sympathizes with you, and he shares your feeling of weakness and infirmities. That's why, pag hindi po uh, natin nagustuhan ang sinabi ng ating 
kapwa na nagpapaloob sa atin, sinasabi natin, alam mo, Brad, sis, madali mong sabihin yan, wala ka sa aking sitwasyon eh. That simply tells us that we cannot fully understand you. But we have a high priest. You have a high priest and his name is Jesus. Who is, un, uh, who is able to understand, sympathize, and shares your feeling of weaknesses and infirmities and liability to assaults of temptation. He himself was, has been tempted in every way as you are, as we are, yet without sinning. Anong ibig mong sabihin doon? Naranasan niya ang anumang nararanasan ng tao sa ngayon. Naranasan niya. By the way, maaaring sabihin natin sa panahon ba ni Jesus, uh, may COVID din ba noon? I would say, nandyan na po. Ang COVID kasi, nasa galing po yan sa demonyo. Hanggat may demonyo, meron na po yan. Kaya that's why, meron po siyang ginagawa sa maraming paraan, hindi lang COVID-19, hanggang 1,000 yan. COVID-1,000, ano po? That He came to steal, to kill, and destroy. That's His work. And all the attacks of the enemy, Naranasan po ito ng Panginoon. Tempted in every way as we are. Yet, He came out victorious. You know what? Sa pagharap po natin sa mga crisis, there are, there are people who uh, went through this crisis and they came out strong. They came out victoriously. They came out mature. But there are some na hindi nila nakakayanan. Why? They linger in their weaknesses. Instead of coming into the presence of God, into His throne of grace, so that they will receive mercy and help in time of need, they wallow in self-pity. They look at themselves at uh, sila'y naawa sa kanilang sarili at naghanap sila ng masisisi at hindi lang ang jamblo ang nasisisi kundi ang mga tao sa paligid niya ang nasisisi. Tapos sa po yun. Next message ko po, pakinggan nyo. Doon tayo mag-uusap ng ganong tema. Okay? Jesus is the only one who became victorious over every situation na ating kinaharap. Naintindihan ka niya. Kuya ate, naunawa ang kanya. Sa iyong pangungoy-ngoy, kasama mo siya. Kung anong nararanasan mo ngayon, nararamdaman mo, na para bagang ikaw ay pinabayaan, naintindihan niya yun, narara- naranasan niya yun. Kaya lang, huwag kang manatili dyan, ate, kuya. Meron tayong Jesus na ating punong saserdote. He's our high priest. Come to Him. That's why verse 16, Let us then fearlessly, okay, read together now, Let us then fearlessly, confidently, and boldly draw near to the throne of God's grace, God's unmerited favor. Stop it from there. Let us, you and me, yun po yung let us. Eh, paano kung lalapit sa Panginoon? Wala lang nagpapalo up sa akin. Excuse me, my, my friend, my brother, my sister. You don't need someone to follow you up. Jesus has been speaking to you. Even through the messages, God, the Holy Spirit has been reminding you that you have been destined for greatness. You have been given the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, through His Word. So, ano sabi po? Let us then fearlessly, oh, read together again. Let us then fearlessly, confidently, and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, God's unmerited favor, that we may Receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in time for every need. Look at the next part of the explanation. Appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when you need it. Parang kanta ano po. Now, it's up to you. Grace is available. The throne of the grace of God is open for you. But no one can drag you into the throne of grace. You yourself have to come to the throne of grace fearlessly, confidently, and boldly. No one can come into the throne of grace in your behalf. 
ikaw mismo ang dapat Lumapit sa Panginoon because ikaw rin mismo ang makatatanggap ng kanyang habag sa anumang kahinaan natin o sa anumang mga pagkukulang natin. Tapos sa po yun, huwag ka nang, huwag ka nang magmukmuk. Huwag ka nang magmungoy-ngoy. Sapagkat kung ano man ang naging kahinaan mo, sapat po ang biyaya ng Diyos. Tatanggapin mo ang kanyang habag. At hindi lang habag, biyaya niya and find grace to help in time for every need. What is this verse saying? There are things in our lives that we are experiencing problems, struggles, difficulties because of our failures, mga kapatid. It is because of our failures. But in that failure that has caused us to suffer, you will receive mercy. And that consequence of our failure, which has caused us to have a need, a struggle, God will give you grace. Amen? So you don't need to stay in that weakness. You don't need to stay in that place of weakness and of that darkness at magtatayo ka pa ng bahay doon. Wag po. God's grace is sufficient. You, can, you have to simply approach the throne of grace. Whatever opportunity God is giving you, take hold of it. Ano po ang opportunity na binibigay ng Diyos sa gitna ng crisis na ito? Okay, sabihin natin ECQ. Uh, pinagbabawalan ng uh, mag tayo ng uh, face-to-face. It's okay. There is still a way for you to come near to the throne of grace. There is the www.jchgm Facebook. Meron po tayong online worship. Pwede tayong dumulog doon. Kaya lang, wag kang mag-relax. Habang nag-worship, nagkakape, kumakain ng breakfast. Wag. You focus so that you can receive. You see, when you are in deep trouble, what is important is your receiving. Yung po yung babantayan natin. Okay? Yung receiving of the mercy and the help and the grace. Right? Because when God moves in your life, when God releases His grace, His power, it will be appropriate, sapat, sakto, mismo, na tulong sa iyo. Well time, na, na, nasa tamang panahon. At ito'y darating sa iyo sa tamang panahon, oras, na kailangan mo ito. Dahil so, ito po yung mga assurance sa atin. Tanong, is it okay to be weak kung meron namang biyaya? Meron tayong pepeding lapitan. Eh, Pastor, wala namang dumadalaw sa akin. Ay, hirap na ECQ, kapatid. Mahirap ng dumalaw ngayon. In fact, marami na pong mga membro ang dumating sila sa matinding pagsubok. Ay, hindi naman po ako makapunta sa kanila. Ay, marami pong checkpoint sa NCR ngayon. Pero sa trono ng Panginoon, wala pong ECQ. Wala pong checkpoint, mga kapatid. Ito na po ang bukas na pagkakataon sa atin at oportunidad na maranasan mo ang pagkilos ng Diyos. Bangong ka. Okay? Gamitin mo ang pananampalataya mo. Dumulog ka sa Panginoon. Okay? Gamitin mo ang bibig mo. Gamitin mo mata mo. Magbasa ka ng salita ng Diyos. Gamitin mo tenga mo. Makinig ka ng pangangaral ng salita ng Diyos. At kung hindi mo nagustuhan ng pangangaral, punta, ko, punta po kayo sa jchgm.com. And these messages are timely in such a time as this. Okay? Amen. So work out your faith. Number one, wake up to your reality. Number two, work out your faith. Number three, walk into your victory. And sabi po, when you Uh, exercise your faith and approach God fearlessly, boldly, with confidence, you will receive. When you have received something from God, then stand up. Walk into that truth that you have received. Walk into that revelation that you have received. If you have received a word from God that you are the healed of the Lord, walk into it. Maligo ka na, magbago ka na ng damit, magbihis ka, na para kang aalis. Pag tinanong ng mga kasama mo sa bahay, uh, saan po kayo pupunta? Ah, ako'y magaling na. 
Pinagaling na ako ni Jesus at lumalakad na ako sa kanyang kagalingan. Magpabango ka na. Mag, uh, gamitin mo yung pabango na dalawang taon nang hindi nagagamit. Mapapaso na po yan. Ha? At kayo mag-toothbrush na at uh, mag na kayo. O, pagbukas na ng barberya, magpakupit ka na. As if you are brand new, this is a new day. Amen. So there are things na probably it begins with the Spirit but it has to uh, it has to be seen tulad po ng a woman with the issue of blood. Nung naranasan niya yung healing, she felt in her body. Nararanasan natin. Dapat po, and, and when you receive that revelation of victory, you walk into it. If you receive the revelation of your healing, you walk into it. If you receive the revelation of God's blessing and provision, don't talk about the problem. Don't talk about the need. Just be thankful that God will provide. And God has already provided. Talk about how God has already healed you in the name of Jesus according to the promise of the Word of God. And the promise of the Word of God will always be yes and amen to you in Christ Jesus. That's your victory. Amen. Don't allow the enemy to steal from you the victory that God has already accomplished for you. Amen. Walk in your victory. Numbers 14, 7 and 8. Sabi po rito ni Caleb. The land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. That's why, that's uh, when they spied Canaan. Nagkaroon po ng 12 spies. Ano po? At ito po ang sabi ni Caleb. If the Lord is pleased with us, He will lead us into that land. A land flowing with milk and honey. And will give it to us. The Word of God says that God will not withhold any good thing from you. Is healing a good thing from you? He will give it to you. Is provision a good thing for you? He will give it to you. And in the Old Testament, it says, we'll give it, we'll give it. Still in the future. In Christ, He has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. In Christ, He has blessed you with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. In Christ, He has provided for you glorious riches in Christ Jesus our Lord. Sa Old Testament, future pa po yun. In the New Testament, because of what Jesus Christ has done, this is already a past tense for us. And the past tense is our present reality. Amen? If the Lord is pleased with us. Bakit po conditional if the Lord is pleased with us? The Lord is just simply asking, if you will trust Him, if you will just submit to His perfect will, if you will just receive the word as He has promised, that's when God is pleased. Okay? If the Lord is pleased with us, if, you, if only you will trust God, if only you will receive the promise as true, if you will only believe that the He who promised is faithful, then you will experience the good things, the exceedingly, abundantly, beyond all that we can ask or think things into your life. Numbers 14 now, 9. Only, everybody say only. Okay, only do not rebel against the Lord. And do not be afraid. These are weaknesses response. Do not rebel. Do not be afraid of the people of the land because we will devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. Let me ask you the question, the question how do you walk in your victory? Do not rebel against God. Do not believe the opinions of the world more than the truth of the Word of God. That's rebellion. But rather, set your heart to take hold of the promises of God. Set your heart to believe in the Word of God regardless of the circumstance. And then do not be afraid. That's what you can do. Okay? Ang, ang alagaan natin yung response natin. Kung ano yung marireceive natin, sagot ng Diyos yun. 
Do not be afraid of the people of the land. Their protection is gone. But the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. He will give us the promised land. In our case, we have the promised land. On the basis of what Christ has done on the cross, God has already brought you in the promised land. A life that is flowing with milk and honey. Ito po yung isang buhay na ganap at kasiyasiya. Yan po yung corresponding uh, truth of the promised land in the Old Testament and the promise of the Lord of the abundant life that we have in Christ. Okay? But we need to walk in victory. Do not walk in defeat. Pag tayo po natatakot, ano pong nilalakaran natin? Pagkadaig, pagkatalo. We are living in the old reality. Na para bang talonan tayo, dapat magsumikap tayo para tayo manalo. Hindi po. The Lord is with you. And if the Lord is with you, who can be against you? So do not be afraid. You may be sick right now. You may have a great need. You may have a great challenge or a great tribulation that you're going through. Do not be afraid. But instead, walk into your victory. Walk in faith. Work out your faith. Wake up to your reality. At tingnan po natin kung ano yung dapat natayuan natin ngayon. Anyway, laban kung laban, walang bawi. Ano po? Kung lalaban na rin lamang tayo, laban na tayo. Let's uh, take our side on the victorious side. On victory side. Kung ako po may laban sa buhay, ay hindi ako tatayo dun sa talunan. I, I will not dwell in the things that are negative. Things that make me afraid. But rather, I will focus myself on the things that will encourage me. For instance, worship. Right? So let's all now be serious. Akala natin yung worship natin online is ganun-ganun na lamang. No. Even my messages, I have a, a prayer in my heart. I always pray and believe in faith that it will bring you encouragement and it will give you the strength that you need at the moment. And it will open up your heart to believe by faith in the grace of God that is sufficient for you. Okay? But, the moment we walk in defeat, the moment we worry, we become anxious, the moment we become afraid, you stay out of your victory. You walk out of your victory. Don't walk out of your victory. Walk into, rather, walk into your victory in Christ. Jo uh, Joshua 1, 3 to 5. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will give you every place you set your foot. It is not the Lord who will walk in your behalf. You take the step of faith. Every place where you set your foot, that means you have to step out in faith. In whatever circumstance you want change, in whatever circumstance you want the blessings of God to flow, you want God's healing to be manifested in your life, step out in faith. Walk into your victory. Amen? Because you are supported. You are surrounded by the promises of God. And that way, the Word of God says, blessings will overtake you. His protection will surround you like a shield. Amen? Although there may be morning in the night, but joy will come in the morning. Amen? No one will be able to stand against you in this 2021 to 2022. No! All the days of your life, my friend. All the days of your life. Which means, if you're sick, you will not die because that's the end of your days, my friend. Right? If you have um, needs, financial needs, that's the end. That's not the end of your life. Because you will not be able to stand against these things. All the days of your life, there will be many days. Listen to my message last week. Okay? You, you pray. When Hezekiah prayed, he was given additional 15 years, my friend. As I was with Moses, which means it was something that 
God is referring to a previous event or a previous time that God was found faithful as I was with Moses. So, I will be with you. God is saying to you right now, maaring narinig niyo na po ito ng maraming, maraming, maraming beses. I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. But when you are in deep trouble, these words are something that are precious. I'd like you to take hold of this by faith. Let this be a personal revelation to you. He is with you in your times of suffering, in your times of need, in your times that you have many expenses because of many needs and problems perhaps, or because of uh, doctor's uh, fees or whatever, medicine. God says, I will be with you. And I will never, never, never forsake you, the Word of God says, nor forsake you. Hindi ka pababayaan ng Diyos. Kung hindi ka pababayaan ng Diyos, di ka iiwan ng Diyos. Kapatid, huwag mong iwan ng Diyos. Huwag kang magsarili. Sumabay ka sa Diyos. Sapagkat pag sumabay ka sa Diyos, dadaling ka niya sa parada ng pagtatagumpay. He will always lead you in a triumphal procession sa parada ng pagtatagumpay. That's why you have to take uh, a step of faith. Walk with Jesus. Keep in step with the Holy Spirit. That's how you walk. And you walk every day. Don't worry about tomorrow. God will take care of tomorrow. You worry about today. Whatever needs you have today, you take hold of it. Step in faith and say, Lord God, thank you. You will provide for all my needs today. And tomorrow is a new day to believe in God again. Amen. Kung makamisan, sinasummarize kasi natin eh. Nag-worry na tayo hanggang 2025. Hindi po. Take one day at a time. Every day, seek first the kingdom and His righteousness. And for today, God will add all other things to you. Amen? Walk in your victory. Joshua 6, 9. Again, is it okay to be weak? You answer the question. And here's the answer. Be strong and courageous. You will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Para pong sinasabi, parang masyado namang redundant ang Panginoon. Ano po? Paulit-ulit na lang. Sinabi niyang be strong and courageous. Ginawa pang negative. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Pareho lang po yun. Positive and negative. Kaya lang po sa panahon na tayo may problema, may krisis, kumisan hindi natin mahi, nangihina po tayo sa pangintindi. Ang, ang sinasabi natin ay intindihin nyo naman ako sa aking kalagayang ganito. Hayaan nyo munang ako ay maging mahina sapagkat uh, ay, ay, talagang ganyan ang buhay. Hindi po. Do not even give yourself any opportunity to be weak, to be afraid. Because when you are afraid, when you are discouraged, you are opening yourself to the attacks of the enemy. Ito po ba ay makakatulong sa atin? Hindi po. Magkukumpli ka pa. Magpapalala pa sa anumang sitwasyon. What is the reason that you don't need to be weak? That you cannot accept to be okay to be weak? Because the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. You have to keep in step in faith with your God. In the first place, you are in that deep trouble because of yourself. Probably because of your failures, because of your weakness, because of your whatever foolish things you have done. But this time, God is inviting you. Go with God. And when God is with you, He will be with you wherever you go. And the place, your destination, your destiny in the presence of God is good. Always good. Amen? He will bring you to a good, abundant, spacious, promised land. So, be strong and courageous. Walk in your victory. No retreat, no surrender. 
magpatuloy po tayo sa Panginoon. So what have I learned today? Is it okay to be weak? Answer me, people of God. Is it okay to be weak? No. No. No! It's not okay. Because it will not be okay with you. It may be okay in your feelings, but not okay because the enemy, you are simply opening yourself to the attacks of the enemy that will make your situation more worse and complicated. Amen? Wake up to your reality. Gising. Gising po tayo. Okay? Your reality is now in Christ. Work out your faith. Tulad ng the woman with the issue of blood. She did not just accept his, her destiny as, anyway, mamamatay na rin lamang siya. Hindi po. Hanggat humihinga kayo, faith, you can exercise your faith. You can work out your faith and take hold of the victory of the Lord for you. Faith is your victory. Number three, walk into your victory. Lumakad ka sa tagumpay na ibinigay sa iyo ng Panginoon. Sayang naman, binigay sa iyo ang victory. Hindi mo naman nilalakaran. Huwag na huwag tayong papayag na ang sitwasyon natin ay kakaiba sa pangako ng Diyos. You see, the perfect scenario that we want to be in is when the Word of God, we walk in parallel or we walk, we walk in tangent with the Word of God. Kung ano pong sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos, yun din ang nararanasan natin sa ating mga buhay. And that's our goal. Amen? When you're weak, don't stay there. Don't stay in your weakness. Stay in the strength of the Lord instead. Amen? Tayo po'y manalangin. Panginoon, salamat po sa iyong gabay. Thank you for your word is true. I release strength to those who may be weak right now. For when they are weak, they are strong because of the grace of God. I release also the grace of God, the mercy of God in our failures and our foolish decisions and foolish actions. We receive grace to find grace to help us in time of need. So Lord, thank you that you will minister to your people even this week. That you will allow us to wake up to the reality of what Christ has done for us. And that we will continually stay, walk with you, abide in you, and be at the end, become an overcomer. Lord, we bless you. Because in Christ, we are more than conquerors through him. Because he loves us so much. To you, Lord, we give back all the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.